Welcome back. In this third session of our drawing course, we're going to be looking at tone or shading. So let's get started. I'm going to start by looking at gradient from light to dark with a pencil, um, preferably something softer than a HB. So something in the B range, this is the 4B. Um, the higher the number, the darker the mark it will make. Um, with a pencil like this, you do need to have a very good pencil sharpener. Um, a blunt pencil sharpener will twist and snap the lead all the way down. Um, or, if you're confident to, use a knife. I'm just going to demonstrate sharpening with a knife. So I'm holding steady with one, one hand and I'm pushing gently with the other, paring back the wood. very controlled, slowly just pushing it with my thumb. And then, once I've parred it back, I can then just scrape gently on the lead, get it sharp. If you try to do both bits at once, the different hardnesses make it more likely you'll slip and have an accident. Okay, so that's nice and sharp. Let's get started then. So, if I press very gently, I will get a faint tone and the harder I press, the darker it will be and then lighter. So you can go from light to dark, very straightforwardly just by varying the pressure. I'm going to just ask you to do an exercise with this, which is creating a simple wave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start quite dark down the ridge and as I come up get lighter and then as I go back down the other side start to get darker again Working backwards and forwards to blend that. And keep going. Okay, now just need to sharpen this up. I'm going to take a rubber. I'm going to rub out to sharpen the edge. This is a hard plastic rubber. Sharpening that edge all the way around. And to make it really nice and sharp, I'm going to put a line around, but the line shouldn't be any darker than the tone. So it's going to start dark and gradually get lighter and then get darker there, lighter, darker, go into light. There we have it. Uh, an important thing to notice about the line is the way that it gets um, it goes dark and light and dark, and it's quite sharp. If you want something to look 3D, it does need to have sharp edges, and you need to be careful not to put too heavy a line all the way around the outside, otherwise it will flatten it. Um, when we talk about tone, people tend to think very much about black and white, but there's no reason why uh, it, it has to be. Here's one I started earlier in colour. 
And what I've been doing here is grading from light through to dark, going from yellow into orange, into red, into purple. Working the colour pencil over, and you can see here I've sharpened it. Here I haven't sharpened the outside yet. So if you prefer, you might decide that this for this session to work in colour and use those sort of colour blends. We're now going to move on to an exercise using that grading of tone. Several possible exercises actually. Um, just playing around with those tones quite abstractly. Here is another one using a couple of different colours and you'll notice varying the pressure to create grading. You could do something that was more of an optical illusion like that. Or if you prefer You could do something a little bit more realistic. There are lots of pictures you can find on the internet for inspiration. So I'm going to have a go at something just quite abstract. I'm going to work with um, colour pencils. These are watercolour pencils, um, which means I can add a little bit of water to it if I like. Um, but ordinary colour pencils would be just fine. Or you might prefer to work with uh, felt tip pens or, um, or ordinary pencils. So I've sketched out an, an idea of a design. I've sketched it in uh, orange so that you can see it. Normally I'd use yellow. What I definitely wouldn't use is an ordinary pencil because what I'd be introducing into my lovely coloured uh, drawing is dirt. So I'm going to start with a particular area and just notice that I'm not necessarily using straight lines. I'm trying to make interesting sort of shapes. So I'm following this curving contour. See what next? Hmm. I fancy creating a bit of a shadow under there. A little bit dark under there, so into that purple, I'm actually going to have a little bit of um, blue just to darken it off just a little bit more. I'm pressing quite hard, you can probably see because the table wobbly. Um, now, what shall I do with that? Just blend that out a little bit more. I think I'll merge it into. More of a sort of pinkish colour. So on this section, I'm keeping the lines quite flat. I'm trying to alternate from dark to light. So if that edge is dark, I would make this one light. 
vice versa. So that's a light one, I'm doing a dark edge against it. I'm going to carry on with this, have fun, see you in a bit. Well, there you have it. Um, I've had a little bit of black just to really emphasise the light and dark. Hope you enjoy this exercise um, and I'm now going to get ready for the next step. Now we're going to move on to looking at how you can use tone to make things look three dimensional. Starting with um, basic forms, um, so a sphere. I want you to notice that uh, how the light is falling on this sphere. It's coming from the side, and so we get a light crescent. The tone gets darker and darker in the crescent shape, ending in a dark circle. Alternatively, if it's coming slightly more from the front, we'll get a light spot and then the tone gets darker in concentric circles and in a dark crescent. People often struggle to see um, a C tone and the reason usually is because they are looking at an object where there's lots of different light coming from all different directions. If you can, sit sideways to a window so the light is just coming from one direction or put a lamp onto your object so you're controlling the light and you'll find that so much easier to see where the tones fall. Notice on this by the way that the line around isn't a dark line, it's no darker than the tone. That's very important. If you put a thick dark line on instead of it looking like um, a sphere. It will look more like a, a hole or something like that. It's worth practicing these. Getting something round. It could be an apple, it could be a ball and shine the light on and practicing the tones or work from this image by pressing pause. Here we have light on other objects. Again coming from the side Notice with the um, cylinder how it gets gradually darker. The lines coming in this direction um, vertically. Oh, we get those two muddled up. Um, and then just a little bit of reflected light, so it gets slightly lighter again towards the edge. Notice the, the line at the bottom is dark because there's a shadow sitting on a tabletop. Notice that the line on the top does something interesting. It starts off dark, gets lighter, and then it gets dark again opposite the dark bit. It will also be in shadow, and then lighter again as it comes around. A cube. One side's in light, one's in semi-shade, one's in shade, and a strong shadow coming away. Uh, and a cone shape. Notice that the shadow falls very similarly to the cylinder, except that you are doing radial lines. That makes sense. Okay. So I'll leave that on the screen for a moment. If you want to pause it, you could practice by drawing these directly. What I'm going to be working from is this. Now, it's something I had set up earlier, but I can't at the moment film that and show you my drawing um, at the same time. So we're having to rely on a photograph, but hopefully you can see with the ball, the spot of light and the dark sort of crescent away from it. Uh, light side, semi-dark, dark. Lighter, gradually blending into darkness over the other side. Okay. Make sure that you can see that. Just get a piece of paper. Okay, that looks fine. I'm going to be working with a um, a charcoal pencil. 
you can work with whatever you fancy. Um, it's worth just taking your time, sketching out. Notice I'm just sort of practicing doing that circle before I do it. I'll do. Just check the angle. Now, nobody's going to be looking if you don't do it exactly the same size and shape. Doesn't matter. I've got this large sort of cylindrical thing, and just notice it's symmetrical. So I'm going to draw a few sort of lines coming down along a, a middle line and just sort of start to join those up a little bit not going to try to be too exactly I should move it further across I think I've done it a little bit little haven't I don't matter Now, you can work in lots of different ways, unless you could decide to be, um, to treat this, you know, very, very carefully, but I'm going to actually uh, work with my nature. I'm going to be a bit scruffier. That's why I'm using the charcoal. So, lovely and dark along there. I'd recommend just find a few simple objects that you can sort of work from. Notice just like the um, cone that the shade in here sort of comes around like that. Shadow there, getting lighter. The side of this. Oh, I definitely should have brought that over a bit further, shouldn't I? And shadow. Fairly dark and a bit lighter on the front. So you can see this taking shape. I'm going to carry on working on that a little bit more. See you in a minute. And there's my finished drawing. Okay, on to the final exercise of today's session. For our final exercise, we're going to look at how we can use those basic shapes to help us draw um, some of the features that 
the face, in particular the nose and the mouth. So here we have uh, a more finished drawing. I'm going to be working from the picture on the left. Let's get started. So I'm going to be sticking with my charcoal pencil because I enjoyed working with it earlier. Let's start with the nose. We have in the middle a sphere. Can you see that right? And two smaller ones either side. And then we have a kind of cylinder or cone-like shape for the rest of the nose. I start joining that all up and um, so I'm going to join my nostril quite dark but as I come round if you notice it becomes lighter um, so I'm going to let my line just get lighter and disappear simply on this side joining that nostril and then just sort of petering out and then the outside of the nostril the shadow falls in a sort of crescent shape like this. Can you see that? And up the side of the nose, it sort of gradually tapers in. A little bit harsher, getting lighter into the middle. A bit of shadow sort of spreading out. Only at the very top that it's, it's really strong change of tone. I just need to rub out my construction line, so get rid of that. And there we have the start of the nose. Just for working a little bit more, I just need to blend that tone a little bit. So the most important thing to remember, there's no hard line down the middle of the, down the sides of the nose and the nostrils are formed in two parts which don't meet. Okay. Moving on to the lips, the shadow underneath here. Now, people do struggle with lips. Well, I'm going to show you a way of drawing them, which I think you'll find a lot easier. I'm going to start with the construction line, which is the middle of the mouth. Just mark out the bottom lip, marking out the top lip a little bit. And this is where people do struggle, okay, getting this right. So I'm going to concentrate on the middle, get that lovely the darkness in the middle. First of all, and then underneath the bottom lip, there's a very definite sort of shadow here, which sort of comes around, but gets a bit vaguer as it curves around. And then the shadow on the lip kind of rolls over. No, it's, so it's like a cylinder. We've got some darker shadow around here. Just pull that back in a bit. Sort of rolling around. With a light in the middle. The top lip is the hardest. And the reason it's hard is because there's a very distinct line along the top lip. But the problem is that that's a light line. So you have to be very careful not to put a dark line on it. So I'm just going to add it in, in, in tone, this top lip, grading it from dark to light. And then start to put in the shadow, leaving a definite light bit 
And come out on the mouth just a little bit too far down. So just grading that shadow in. Next time, we'll be looking again at tone, but using it um, much more expressively and loosely. So here are a few examples. We will return to portraiture as well. For the next session, if you have any charcoal or chalk, that would be very useful, as would any white or black paint, or for that matter, black inks. If not, then we'll be able to work around it. Um, have fun, and please, if you do do Facebook, um, share what you've been doing on the Art for All um, Facebook page. Details coming up now. Bye-bye.